Right now our project's a little boring, so let's make it more visual. The first thing we're going to do is add an image to our supporting file. So I'm going to go ahead and move my Xcode down, and I've already added the St. Bernard's uh, JPEG uh, photo onto my desktop. So if you saved it in your downloads file, uh, go ahead and access it there. You can find this in the handout section on the Code Coalition platform. So go ahead and download this image and we're going to go ahead and we're going to drag this into our project to supporting files. And I can see here that I'm going to make sure that destination copy items into destination group folder if needed is selected. I'm also going to have the create groups or any added folders selected as well as add to targets. It's incredibly important that we add this to targets. If we don't, we're not going to be able to find this photo. So I can press finish and it's going to go ahead. I can move my Xcode project back up and it's going to go ahead and add this photo to my project so I can go ahead and find it. And personally, I think St. Bernard's are pretty awesome. So this image I'm really pumped about. Um, so, you know, edit logging is pretty boring. Let's make some stuff up here. Let's go to storyboard and use this photo. So I can go to my image view here and I can drag this image view in. I'm going to make sure that my view controller is set to four inches. So in my scene, I can select view controller and I can look at the size. It's going to be inferred and the inferred is going to be a four inch screen. I'm not going to set it to any size screen. So it'll automatically shift to a four inch screen here. And I'm also going to make sure my image view takes up the whole screen. Um, incidentally, I will mention that Xcode and iOS 7 have some updates to auto layout if we wanted a 3.5 inch screen, but we'll be covering auto layout in a future video. So we'll be able to figure out how to make a single view uh, or view controller to manage both 3.5 inch screens for the iPhone 4 and 4S, uh, as well as 5 inch screens for the iPhone 5 and 5S. Uh, so we're going to add two labels to our project as well, and this is going to be used to display our dog's name as well as our dog's breed. So I can add a label into the lower left-hand corner, and I'm going to use my blue guiding lines here to set it up nicely, and I'm going to add another label over into the right-hand side. And for the left-hand label, we're going to change this up a little bit. We're going to change the attributes. So I'm going to make its font type so I can press the little T here and I can go to uh, custom uh, no we're gonna go to system we'll go up to custom at the top here and I can choose the font type I'm gonna use Futura and I'm gonna change the style to condensed extra bold so we can really see this and I'm gonna change its size uh, let's make it 23 I can press done and we see that my label is pretty small right now, so I'm going to go ahead and make my label larger, I'll drag it about halfway. And I'm going to do the same thing with my other label, I'm going to drag this halfway the other way. Now, I don't want these to have any chance of overlapping, so I'm going to change the alignment to right alignment. And I'm also going to adjust the font for this one as well, so we're going to make the font for this uh, size 12. So I can move this size down to 12. And I'm going to use Futura again, so I'm going to use font and custom, and then I'm going to change the family to Futura, and then I'm going to leave the style as medium. That'll be fine for this one. So we're going to have our name really stand out, and our breed is going to be much smaller. Um, I'm also going to change the color of both these labels, so I'll make the color white for both of these, and I can change it for this label as well. So we'll use white color, and now we're going to hook up our image view and both of our labels to our header file. So let's go ahead and open up the the correct header file. So we're going to open up the MBF viewcontroller.h by holding on the Alt key and pressing on MBF viewcontroller.h. And I'm going to go ahead and resize this a little bit so I can see my full uh, view controller view here. I want to make sure I have my image view selected, which I confirm in my view controller scene and just like we did in our Code Coalition mini tutorial videos, we're going to be able to hold down the control key and drag to my header file. And I'm going to call this variable name my image view. And I can press connect, uh, which is going to be a property. And I'm going to go ahead and hook up my label 
And the one on the left is going to be my name label. So I can control drag this in. And we can say name label. Notice that I'm using lowercase for the variable name and I'm using camel case. So I'm using an up case for the first letter of the second word. I can press connect. And on my right label, I can also do the same thing. And this is going to be our dog's breed. So again, we're going to make this outlet connection. And we're going to say breed label. And I can press connect. So now I'm going to go back to single view and I can press on MBF. Uh, ViewController.m because I'm going to write some code in here and we're going to write this inside of the view did load method so I can go ahead and I can remove uh, the two lines of code we learned about in our previous video this int dog ears is equal to uh, the method we've created agent dog ears and we can also remove this nslog statement uh, and right after my dog.age we need to set up one additional property we created for MBF dog that we haven't set yet and that was the image for our dog. So let's set this image property. My dog.image is equal to UI image, image named, and we're going to say st.bernard.jpg. And to understand this now, we understand that our image property must be equal to a UI image object. So if I type image in here, we see that it's of type UI image, and we set that in our MBF dog header file. So what this tells us is the right side of the equation must give us back a UI image object. Thus we know that image named the method creates a UI image when it takes one argument and in this case it's going to take a string that's the same as our file name where our image is saved. And incidentally this should be capital JPG not lowercase. Uh, to match up with what I have in my supporting files over here. Um, so what this does is the method searches for an image name stbernard.jpg and once it finds this file it converts it to UI image object and returns that UI image object to us. What's peculiar, peculiar for us is that UI image is a class and not an object. Image name is therefore known as a class method, a concept that will be touched on later. On the bright side, there are only two types of methods, so now you've seen both types. The first type was an instance method, which we call an objects, and the second type is a class method, method, which we're seeing right now, which gets called on a class. And we know this is a class because it begins with a capital letter. In this case, we have a capital U in, at the beginning of our keyword here. One other thing to note before we move forward. I want to reiterate that we need to be very careful with spelling and capitalization when we write our computer programs. Just like an essay submitted to a course would be marked off for spelling and punctuation mistakes, the computer will not understand if you're off by even one letter. This can be very frustrating when you're starting out, but in the long run you'll appreciate the feedback your computer gives you. Unlike an essay that you need to submit to a class and you have to wait for the professor to grade it and give you updates on what kind of changes you should make as well as you know red ink through all your mistakes, the computer immediately gives you feedback every time you run it so that you can make updates to your code as you go along instead of having to wait and hand everything in at once. So this immediate feedback makes it much easier to learn in the long run. Okay, so now let's take a look at our dog attributes on the screen. Well, I think we've seen some more things before. So at the bottom of you did load, I'm going to be updating all my image uh, and my view uh, objects. Uh, on my screen. So let's start with the image. So we're going to say self.myImageView.Image. Image views have a property that's of image and as we type this here we it has to accept a UI image object. Well we have a UI image object and that's saved as my dog.image. So now these two types are the same and what will happen is the image on top of our image view will update to the image we just saved as our stbernard.jpg file that we converted to a UI image object. Next, let's update the name label for our dog. So we can say self.namelabel.text. And this has to be equal to a string. Well, we've already created a string and we called it nana. So we can say my dog.name. And now this is again the same type. If we tell it that it has to be equal to an a string, we have to set it equal to an n string. 
both sides must be the same type. So we can also do this with our breed label. And breed label also has a property text, which needs an NS string. And we could say my dog dot breed. Now we can run our program. And I'm going to make sure that I have the iPhone Retina 4-inch screen selected so my application views display properly. And we see that all my properties are being updated if I scroll down or scroll up depending on how your simulator loaded up. You'll see that our properly, properties are now being properly reflected on our view.